Hi guys, and welcome to Tag Talks. So, personally, I love fireworks, uh, purely because of their colours. So today, that I've set out to try to find out exactly where these colours come from, and I'm joined here by Dr. Ben Ward. So what's your background, etc.? Yeah, so I'm an inorganic chemist, what they call an organometallic chemist. Mm -hmm. um, so I teach inorganic chemistry at Cardiff University, and I've been here for 11 years now. So without getting into too much detail about exactly how fireworks work themselves, the colour that we get from fireworks is a combination of three things. So firstly, we have a chemical for which provides the oxygen, so we call it deoxidant. Secondly, we have a fuel that does the burning itself. And thirdly, we have an insoluble metal that provides the colour itself. So just going into a bit more detail, uh, Ben, well, how does it work? Okay, well, it works because of the structure of the atom. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to understand a little bit about the structure of the atom, not too much detail. So specifically the electrons in an atom. Okay. And the electrons can occupy different energy levels. So they can have a, a small amount of energy or a bigger amount of energy, mm -hmm. or even more energy. And that's the important point. So if we imagine this red ball is an electron, normally the electron has a certain amount of energy, and we'll call that the ground state. And if you imagine with the ball, the higher it is off the mat, then the more energy it has. So this is, what the, this is the amount of energy that the electron has under normal conditions. Now, if I were to give that electron more energy, mm -hmm. I would move it to a higher level, so it's further off the ground. But that's not particularly stable. The electron doesn't like having too much energy. So what happens next is the electron falls down back to the ground state that we had before. Oh. And it does that by emitting the energy, the excess energy that I've given it, but this comes out as light. Right, and we okay. see this as a colour. But what's important is that for every different element, the height of this energy level, so uh, on this top of this, uh, this display here, the height of that is different for every element. And so the amount of energy that's emitted as light changes depending on which element we're dealing with. And we see that as different colours. Right. So, um, so, as I can see, like you prepared a few of these earlier. So, so are we going to see roughly how these will look now? Yep, so we're going to um, add energy by using fire. Okay. So we'll set fire to them. And as you mentioned earlier, we have uh, the fuel. This is, an, uh, this is methanol in this case. And then we have the, the oxygen is actually air, because we're gonna burn them in air. And I've just put some metal salts in here uh, that are not going to do anything to the fire, but they're just going to be um, there to accept energy. So we've got some sodium chloride, uh, we have potassium chloride, strontium chloride, barium chloride, and we have some boron containing compound. And we're going to take these and excite them by giving them energy and see what colours come out of it. Perfect. Well, um, let's get it started. I'll do from the trimethyl. So we'll put a little bit of this, uh, these solutions, about that much. I'll shake these for you. Thank you very much. Well. So you can see that's about how much we're going to put in. And that one. Fine, and then we'll move these out of the way so they're nice and safe. Put them in the yeah, just put them over there. Okay. And now I'm going to use an extra long match just to make it nice and safe. Wow. As we go from left to right. Yeah, so we see the nice sodium here, which is nice and yellow. Then we've got a potassium, which is um, a little bit purple. Then we've got strontium, which is red. And then we've got the barium, which is a green, and the boron, which is also green. So would you say in this way as well, um, that this can be used really as a form of visual spectroscopy? 
So it is. So it can be in quite an easy way yeah. of trying to differentiate certain metallic ions? Well, that's exactly right, because what we can do is we can, um, we can use the different colours to detect particular elements. So if we want to know if our, we have a, a chemical sample that contains some strontium, we can you put this in a machine that essentially looks for how much red there is, and that will tell us how much strontium there is. It's perfect. And because it's unique to every element, then, then we can detect precisely which elements we have. What we have here is we've seen various different, um, different colours, and each one has been made by having elements in there, where we have an electron in a ground state, which is the lowest energy level. We added energy in the form of heat. That made the electron what we call excited, so we give it extra energy, and then it releases that energy again in the form of light. And because the energy levels in each atom are different, we see these as different colours. And that's what we've just seen in our demonstration today. So, um, so in terms of the, the colours that are given off, can, can we make it more accurate than just saying that we see a blue frame, a red frame, etc.? Absolutely. So we use a machine um, in, in chemistry laboratories and analytical laboratories called a spectrometer. Okay. And a spectrometer essentially gets a, a, a graph of the wavelengths of light that are emitted. So rather than just saying it's blue or it's red, mm -hmm. it will give us the actual wavelength in number of nanometers, for example. So it might be 700 nanometers is red um, and various other colors. And you can very precisely say exactly what the wavelength is. So if you've got two different shades of green, you can differentiate between these two using this. Better. So for the final recap, we have different colors that have been generated. And we've done this by taking an, uh, different atoms and importantly considering the electrons of the atoms which are in the, the ground state, which is the lowest energy state that they can, uh, can exist in. We've given them energy and given them energy by using heat and that has made these electrons go into their higher energy excited state as we call it. And then these electrons have relaxed back into the ground state, giving off energy in the form of light that we have seen as colours. So thank you very much, Ben, for that amazing demonstration. Um, so if you like that, uh, please drop a like, a subscribe, or hit that notification bell, and you'll be hearing from me soon.